What's up everyone, it's Ruby here and today I want to start doing discussion videos revolving around Baldur's Gate 3 because there's a lot that I want to talk about that I can't necessarily talk about when I'm playing the game but uh, there's a lot of subjects that I kind of want to just talk about, you know, character analysis, theories, all that, all of it. So that's what we're going to do today and we're going to talk about today kind of one that doesn't necessarily have a complete answer and that is whether or not we as the characters should be trusting what the emperor has to say um and this is a, a but first of all spoilers okay spoiler alert if you guys are not past act two or three do not watch this video because there will be major story spoilers okay this is your warning now if you have not gone and passed act two and three do not watch this video um if you're in Baldur's gate you should be okay but if you have not reached that point yet you will be spoiled okay so that's what we're working with okay so the whole premise of the game is that you wake up in a Nautiloid ship after basically being abducted and you have been, there's been a parasite that has been put into your eyeball, right? Tadpole, as they say. And now you are in the dilemma of should we embrace it or should we uh, try to get rid of it completely. Now, when you first meet the dream visitor, uh, they don't obviously show that they're the mind flare, but they are. I mean, they are. So, they tell you, you should be using your illicit powers. Now, one thing to take note of is that in this entire game, it shows how manipulative mind flares can be and how persuasive they can be because not only does it show you the lithid powers by showing you oh you can get this person to do what you want by just embracing your lithid powers but also it does it also in reverse where if you meet the mind flare that is very wounded right after meeting Asterion um you there's an option to where you know, you feel compassion towards this mind flare and suddenly you are you know you go in for a kiss and you end up dying because they just kill you now the emperor claims that he's different that he's not here to be your enemy but there's also kind of an idea that the elithids, the the, you know, the the mind flares, they have a goal ultimately to kind of rule the world, right? They want to take over. They love the power. That's why they're spreading out this grand design, as they say, because eventually, I feel like their goal is they want to have everyone be a mind flare so that everyone is an illithid now the emperor i believe him when he says that he used to be an adventurer just like us although there's not really too much evidence if the emperor is a reliable narrator which is also kind of the problem because we have to trust him that he's telling the truth if we think that he has actually been an adventurer before. However, there's also proof that he actually ha could have been because we see in the very beginning how the mind flare trans transmission works is you you start as an adventurer and when you hit the, the, the control button, it turns them into a mind flare. That, that's what happens with the, the woman in the beginning. So we have evidence that yes, they take the adventurers, they, they put them in the pod, they hit a button, and then they become mind flayers. Um, now, 
it d- happens in various stages. Also, I think it's important to know that in order to kind of answer this question, we also have to look at the Githyanki. Because in the lore of it, the Githyanki have known about these Mind Flare people, and they are immediate rivals. That's why Lazel really hates them. You know, they call gay. You know, they, like, they, she does not trust them, she does not like them, she does not, like, she's been grown to hate them. But at the same time, you could argue that the Githyanki might not fully understand what is happening with the Mind Flayers, because they have lies themselves in their culture, like Vlakith. Vlakith is not a god, she's just a high-leveled character. And so they think that Vlakith, um, you know, Vlakith is the one, Vlakith is the one that encourages the mind flares to be exterminated, right? So we know that Vlakith is untrustworthy, and she's the one who's telling us to kill the emperor, to kill the mind flare, to kill everyone. And I think this is where you have to kind of see: is it possible for both sides to be right? Because, on one hand, you could argue that the Mind Flayers don't necessarily understand the, the how much manipulation they are actually doing. Because sometimes, in a way, you can be manipulative without realizing that you are. I don't necessarily think that's what's happening, though. I think they're very well aware of kind of the manipulation that is going on. Now, one thing that is also important to note is that when you become a Mind Flayer, your brain is no longer yours. It's the parasites. Like, you become a different person, so to speak. So you're you're a different person when you become a Mind Flayer. That's, the, that's kind of what, at least what the Githyanki believe, kind of. Where your, your, your mind, your body, and soul are not yours. The other thing to kind of note is why Raphael is involved in this game, the devil. Why does he care so much about these mind flares, about this uh, everything? Now, we know that the absolute is the elder brain, and the elder brain is something that um, controls the world, basically. And the mind flares seem to want to be able to control the elder brain, because it's not for them. Like in the wrong hands, the elder brain. Because basically, what we have is this ball, right? Balls chosen, who control the elder brain, which, and then the absolute is everyone who has like the true souls, or everyone that has a mind flare in them, or not a mind flare, but a tadpole. The question is, where does the tadpole even come from? Because it's not intent. It's not entirely clear. We have the mind. We have the mind flares. We have the absolute, and then we also have the tadpoles themselves. And it seems like the like the like the elder brain and the mind flares are working together. At the same time, though, the elder brain has like its own authority, I think, over the Mind Flayers. It's very complicated. It's actually very... I feel like it's a very complicated story. Because on one hand, you can trust the Mind Flayers, but they ultimately get what they want. Because the whole idea is that you're looking for the cure, you're looking to get rid of the tadpole. But in the end, if you embrace the illicit powers, you end up becoming the very thing you were trying not to become. You become a mind flare. So the question really is, did they get what they wanted? Did the mind flares ultimately get what they wanted you to become? Because all, as far as I'm I'm aware their main goal is to turn everyone into a mind flare. And so by playing the long game, it seems that they ultimately do get what they want. I mean, you become a mind flare. But at the same time, it seems that the emperor doesn't like if that was the goal, 
why not just change you into the mind flare from the beginning? I feel like, in a way, it's because they know that you're going to go after the Chosen. Because that is the ultimate goal of the game, is to go after the Chosen. Orin, uh, Gortash, and 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 um, Ketherick. And I think the ultimate goal is to destroy the chosen ball. But I also think the reason why they're using you to do it is because ultimately you have the choice to control or destroy the brain. I think if you control the brain, then the mind flares have actually won. Because they have gotten what they want, and that is control and power over the entire world. Because now you, the Mind Flayer, are in control of the very thing the Mind Flayers wanted to be control of. The, the brain, the Elder Brain. And so ultimately this all stems back to whether or not you think that the Mind Flayers are in the right, I feel like. Like, you can destroy the Elder Brain as well. Once you become the Mind Flayer, you can destroy them. It's... It's tricky. I kind of want to know what you guys think down below. Do you trust the, the Emperor? Or do you refuse anything that he says? Because the thing is, we don't really know what the what the we don't really know what the emperor is thinking, right? It seems like he want he because I mean based on what the dream visitor says when when she inserts herself or him, they they want you to stay away from the Gith Yankee. They want you to. Um, destroy the chosen like they want you to get the nether stones or whatever they're called and they want you to go against the brain what if the intellect devours and the elder brain have control over the mind flares because in order to become a mind flare, you have to have a tadpole. If you have a tadpole, you're then connected to the absolute. And it seems like the emperor doesn't really know exactly what the absolute is. He just knows that whatever it is, it is preventing them from being able to make their own choices. Because if you see it, like all the true souls, they are all forced to kind of do what the outer brain wants them to do and the outer brain is its own entity it's not a mind flare so i think the ultimate goal is not that here's what i think i think that you can choose to embrace or control like you can choose to embrace or ignore the powers i think the thing is though in order to be for the mind flares to become their own civilians, their own civilization, they have to kind of get rid of the elder brain. Because I think that is what is controlling everyone and making them kind of do what they want. Because they're kind of just serving the absolute. Um, so that's kind of interesting as well. Because maybe, but as soon as you turn against the emperor, he's against you. As soon as you no longer, as soon as you no longer help the emperor, as soon as he knows that you're not here to be a friend, then suddenly he doesn't want to work with you. He goes against you. So I think that the, in the end, they want you to be complicit so that they control the netherbrain. And as soon as you make the action to go against that, they don't like that because they don't want you to destroy the nether brain. They want to control the nether brain themselves. It is the moral dilemma. 
I don't, I don't think there's a right option also because you could kind of argue either way, right? It's kind of like if you, it's basically whether or not you think that the mind flayers are in control of themselves or if they're just obeying the absolute, which is the elder brain. <clears throat> I don't know that answer. Comment down below. I'm curious as to what you guys think. Do you guys think the elder brain, not the elder brain, do you think that the emperor and the mind flayers should be trusted? Comment down below. I'm very curious to hear what you guys think. Did you trust the emperor in your first playthrough? Do you think that trusting the emperor is a good thing? Or do you think that by trusting the emperor, you end up being manipulated yourself? I mean, essentially, you do end up becoming a mind flare, so you kind of become the very thing that you didn't want to become. Leave a comment down below. Very curious to hear what you guys think. And thank you guys for watching. We'll definitely have more of these discussions. I have so much to talk about, so much to say. But uh, for now, we'll call it here. Thank you guys again. Comment down below. Subscribe because we'll have more discussion videos like this. And also more playthroughs. We're, all, we're becoming a Baldur's Gate 3 channel. Like, I'm not even joking about that. We are a Baldur's Gate 3 channel. So, comment down below. Leave a like. And subscribe for more content like this. Peace out, guys. It's been a blast. Catch you next time. Bye.